Hi guys, so I am finally back with my next video and I will say really quickly, it will never be this long in between videos again. Um, I'm about to graduate from school so that just means that I'll have a lot more time really soon to devote to this and I'm excited about that. So anyways, <laughs> to talk about this actual video, what I'm doing here, this is my tiny art show um, pieces that I've talked about a little bit before. So they just have to be traditional and approximately four by four inches and it was really fun to work on this one. So the concept that I had for these ones, because they we had to do four pieces that all went together as one piece basically. So what I did was I wanted to have three characters that were these witch type magical women characters and they each would look completely different but still look like they belonged in a group. And I had a lot of fun designing these characters. It was just really fun to get into it and doing unique different details and each of them and um oh and i will say in case any of you are interested the line work that i do here is actually with just a micron pen and i haven't used one of those in a long time that used to be my staple for for pretty much everything that i did before i started line art digitally and i really loved it i forgot how much i love it because i have a brush pen now this is going a little bit on a tangent but i've been using brush pens a lot for probably the past like year or two because it just felt really tedious to use these really tiny pens but when I used it this time, instead of going back over and thickening up the lines, I let it be the thinness that it needed to be. And it was just really fun to be able to get in there and do a lot of really fine details and build up on those. And I think I'd really like to do that more for my tiny traditional work because it just, it was really enjoyable to be able to have the amount of control that I wanted out of the, out of the pen that I was using. So when this video started, it's actually a little ways into my painting process. Um, the bottom two witches that are the blue one and the green one, I think, those I had almost completely finished when this video started. And I decided to actually scrap them. And that's usually rare because I like to be able to push past my pieces that aren't working. And I know I talk about that, but I like to be able to make something that wasn't working work and in the end I can be happy with it. But for these, I knew that the color scheme for all four of them, I wanted it to be really color or candy colored and very saturated and bright and energetic. And those two ended up really, really dark. And I'll put pictures of them right here so you can see what they actually look like. And I like them independently, but I knew that for it to work for all four pieces, I'd have to make the top two pieces really dark and I knew that I just wanted these to be really bright and fun and playful. So ultimately that was why I chose to restart it because they couldn't just be a standalone piece that I could pull through it. It had to be, those choices would have to affect the other pieces. So it's good to be aware of at what point I need to stop and restart where it would have been a lot worse if I decided to keep pushing forward and then paint the other two pictures and then ultimately be very unhappy with the whole series and then either have to put up pieces that I wasn't happy with or completely restart. So I'm, I'm glad that I was able to catch myself before I went too far. And once I started painting these two again, it was a lot more helpful for me to be able to know when was too far and when was too dark. And at one point I was adding too many layers and that way I could stop before I added too many layers. So I really had a lot of fun figuring out the colors for these pieces because it was an interesting challenge to think through where I had to have the color palettes for each individual piece to look good, but I also had to have all four of the color palettes to look good together since they were one series, they had to be displayed together. And I really love working on challenges, I guess is the right word for that, where it's just, it's fun to work through it and get something to work in the way that I want it to work. But what I ended up doing is an analogous color scheme for all four of them, as well as analogous color schemes within the pieces. So what that means is um, analogous colors are colors that are right next to each other in the color wheel. So like you can have a yellow green, green, and then a blue green, and those are analogous colors. So, so all four of them together, they are the color palettes that are, well, they're the colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. But then once you get into the individual pieces, I chose one color that was the dominant color and then a little bit of accents of the two colors next to it. So like for the blue one, it was mostly blue and then with a little bit of purple and then with just a little bit of this yellowiness to it that made it look a little bit green. And basically I did that with all four pieces and I think that that really worked for me because 
I like working in analysis color schemes, but sometimes they can get a little bit, I don't know, a little bit dull to work with. And this was really fun to be able to do four different analogous color schemes that really fit together well, and then independently they worked well. It was just a good way for me to get back into working with some bright colors and seeing how they interact. So when it came to the background, it actually took me a lot of restraint because I like to go in with a lot of color and then it's too dark. So for this, I needed to make sure that the figure was the darker element and the background was much lighter. That way the figure would come forward. And I also needed to make sure that the background was very simple because if it was too complicated or visually distracting, it would also make the figure blend in too much and they wouldn't stand out and it wouldn't be easy and clear to see it. So I had to go in with a very light hand. I mixed in a lot more water than I usually would even think to do for the background and I made sure to test it before I painted on the actual piece to make sure that it was really light. And that was definitely the key to it. I think that I tend to be a little bit more rushed when I do watercolor, so I'll throw something down and then I will regret it and then I'll have to make everything else darker to make it stand out. And this was really helpful to, for me to kind of learn restraint and to see that I can definitely start out with a much lighter hand and build up to it. And that's really one of the benefits and the beauties of watercolor. So yeah, it was really helpful. It was a really good experience and I loved working on all four of these. That is pretty much it for these four pieces. Um, I will have pictures soon of the actual show and some of the other pieces that people will put in. And uh, I do promise that I will get back into doing digital work and get away from doing a ton of tiny watercolors in a row. I promise I'll put more variety back into this channel. But anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch my future art videos. And until then, I'll see you in my next one. Bye!